It's a beautiful Thursday morning. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the program. I am Nifemi Oguntoye. Well, all attention to the National Assembly this morning. They resumed on Tuesday. On Thursday morning, they have now amended uh, the much-talked-about provision in the Electra Act Amendment Bill. It's Clause 86. Um, sometime last year, Mr. President had written a letter uh, saying that some provisions might have huge financial economic and even security implication on the country. Well, both houses have now reverted, uh, you know, including direct and indirect. The Senate has even gone, you know, a step further to include consensus arrangement. And that's where we'll begin in our conversation from this morning. I have with me lawyer, public affairs analyst, Chukuma Izela. Good morning, and thank you for finding time to come. Good morning, and thank you for having me. Dario Dufoko is assistant editor with the nation's newspaper. Glad to have you here always. My pleasure. All right. So um, I had a lawmaker from um, the Green Chamber say that they decided not to override the president's veto in order not to heat up the polity. Do you agree with the National Assembly's decision? No. Yeah, well, I, whether I agree with what they have done or not, it's of no importance now. That's the decision they have taken. But you will recall that on this same table, sometimes last year, late last year, December or so, I told you that the National Assembly will not override the president. This has nothing to do with uh, their uh, steadfastness with the job we've given to them as our representatives. It is not a sign that they really love us, the people. It is a sign that they are politicians. And you must understand that these people are first politicians before they became lawmakers and they were given the mantle to represent you and I. Therefore, beyond our own interest, beyond what is good for the country, beyond what will make our democracy thrive the more, there are other factors that have been considered. Don't look away from the fact again that this is 2022, an election preparation year. These are politicians who are going to stand for elections. They belong to a political party. And the president and the leadership of the National Assembly belongs to the same political party, on one hand. On the other hand, the governors who are the main, who were the main obstacle to the electoral act as it were, with their opposition to the direct uh, mode of uh, primary election, Majority of them have the parties in their various states in their pocket. And these lawmakers are going to seek the tickets of those same parties back home. So when the chiefs came down, they all have to sit down as individuals now, not as a block anymore, not as a caucus, not as national assembly, but as honorable A, honorable B back home, not in Abuja. Everybody went back home to test the waters. If I continue this confrontation with my governor, what are my chances? The governors are also not daft. They started throwing carrots. Okay, we heard that you said this on the floor of the. We started seeing many of the honorables taking spaces in the newspapers to explain that they were not attacking the governors. The moment that started, I knew, look, we are going to come back to. Uh, what they call the negotiating table and at the end of that negotiation the interest that will be uh, preserved may likely not be yours or nor mine and that's what we see so i'm not shocked mm. i'm not surprised i only saw a set of people who tried to be good representatives of their people i saw a, i see a set of people who worked very hard to test the mindset of Nigerians as regards the kind of uh, primary election we would prefer, they found out that we would all, as Nigerians, want to exercise that power. So direct mm. uh, primary will have been it. But at the end of the day, I am now seeing politicians. Let's talk about the role of Nigerians in the mix. I know that we had this conversation before, and you have the opinion that perhaps the lawmakers should, should try it out to override the president's veto. Uh, but what we were told last year, December, was that they were going back to meet with their constituents mm -hmm. to understand the way forward. Do you think that consultation happened? And do you agree that the decision they made yesterday it, it reflects you know, the will of their constituents? Um, I think... Um, some of them 
would have consulted their constituencies and some people would say, oh, we don't want to hit the, the polity, mm -hmm. just go and... Uh, it, it's not so that we don't throw away the baby with the bathwater. Don't go into this. You may never get it. Uh, so I think I would ordinarily have advised my representative to do the same. Instead of going to a long fight that will be one month and the presidency can compromise a lot of them. Some of them have good rapport with the president so they may never get the two third. That's what many of us were thinking. Be that as it may, what did they get for us this time? Was it as a result of the consultation that they made? How did the Senate get to consensus arrangements beyond the recommendation of the president? Of oh, the president. You know, mm -hmm. uh, ordinarily, consensus would have, been a, would have been a good thing. But what is the meaning of consensus? Consensus is even more uh, uh, difficult than election. Consensus means that all the people that are supposed to vote will come and all of them will consent to a particular candidate. But is it going to work that way? Who are these people? Are they delegates or Yes, delegates. Members? Delegates. For you to okay. say consensus, delegates. it means that all yes. the delegates will be around and they will now say, oh, we want Mr. A to fly How is that flag. different from an indirect mode Good. of primaries? It means the same thing with an indirect mode of primaries. But the only thing is that in the indirect mode of primaries, the person with the highest number of votes will fly the ticket. But consensus means all of them. <laughs> Which is difficult. You see, but you know, sometimes we don't understand the meaning of words that we use. By the time they finish and come back, and when the judiciary interprets the meaning of consensus, they will all be at loss. Mm. The governors think that consensus means the governor appointing somebody and say, oh, we have arrived at a consensus. And at the end, what document shows what consensus is? You're saying that this, is, this, this can lead to more litigation? Yes, it can lead to more litigation. Because what is the meaning of consensus? The meaning of consensus can only have one meaning, that everybody consents to it. Okay. Or that two-third majority of the people consents to it. That is me without dissent. That is the meaning of consensus. I have a document here, and it's from the civil society statement. Mm -hmm. um, it's a civil society statement on the decision of the Senate yesterday. Okay. So um, they commended, number one, the swift action um, taken by the National Assembly upon resumption. However... Number three item on this document is rejecting the decision of the Senate to introduce a completely new mode of consensus as a procedure for candidates' nomination. Mm -hmm. According to them, the consensus mode is anti-ethical um, to democratic principles and mm -hmm. will result in the subversion of popular will. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, it violates the rights of aspirants to equal participation in party primaries and limit the choice of voters to candidates who did not emerge from democratic primary elections. Mm -hmm. Judging from experience, according to them, consensus has occasioned a litany of litigations in Nigeria's electoral process. Mm -hmm. But what is the fear in this arrangement? Because the thinking is, um, I've heard people say, if you, if you enforce or if you force direct primary down the throat of the party, it's also not democratic because mm -hmm. that means you're not saying democracy is let there be options and let yeah. us decide which way to go. Why are we so scared of consensus? If, according to the barrister, consensus is all of us agree, mm. the party members can say, as some of us do not agree, let mm. us decide on another alternative to use. Yes. Isn't that the way to go? Why, why it's cry foul it's over it's it? It's, it's a, at times, at times, we, the people, mm. as uh, lawyers say when they go into the constitution, they say we, the people. Mm. Even when we don't know when they write the constitution, mm. they'll say we, the people, agree. So, Sometimes this notion of we mm -hmm. creates more problem where there should be no problem. Mm. Consensus. The people must all agree. Who? The first issue is who are the we that must agree? We must agree. But who are the we? That's the first issue. It takes us back to the issue of either direct or indirect. Mm. The first thing that will have to be decided by the party is who are the decision makers? Is it going to be all party members? Even when you are talking about consensus. Or the delegates. Or party leadership. Because it's also allowed. The party leadership can decide by consensus. Mm. This is our candidate. Provided that amongst all those people who showed interest in that seat, nobody will dissent. If you say there is a consensus... It's sounding practically impossible. It is possible. It has been done before in this country. 
that no single person would object. Yes, because they always have a way of forcing you. If you take, there is a party among the leading parties in Nigeria that has a standby rule that says once you take the party to court, you automatically suspend them from the party. Those are the tools of consensus. Those are the tools uh, Barista will not uh, tell us about because they are actually not democratic. <laughs> to think it will not happen, forget it will happen. They will achieve it. But is that the will and wish of the people? You discover the answer is actually no. Yeah. But we are contesting for a seat together, three of us. And the party chooses you. And then the two of us have been told in clear times. Either if you camera or whatever that you understand what our party says about taking the party to court. Mm -hmm. If you take the party to court, and that was a nomination form I saw, a local government nomination form for election. At the bottom of the form, it is clearly written there that the party has the final say, and any aspirant that takes the party to court automatically loses, loses his membership. And once you sign, I don't know, it means that you are consenting to what is written on that uh, form. And then when you now take them to court, they will produce that form in court that you consented to this. Let us ask the lawyer, how legal is such provision in oh. the party's constitution? No, no, certainly the courts will strike it down. God. You cannot oust the jurisdiction of the courts in party squabbles. Although the parties have, right. the courts have always said that the parties have the final say on mm. who represents them. Mm. Now, but there can be an issue of who is the party. Okay. Is ah. it the governor? Is How it the chairman? <laughs> or is it the ESCO? Mm. Or is it the president? Who is the party? Mm. And that was why I think that the Senate, when they said consensus arrangement, should have gone out to spell out who will become members of the group that will arrive at the consensus. Mm. It's not good to throw so many things to the judiciary because what you're doing now is to allow the judiciary to decide who is going to be the consensus. If I'm a judge, what I would do is to say, who are the people that are supposed to be people that are going to elect people in an indirect mode? These are the people that are going to make that are supposed to make the consensus arrangement. Not a situation whereby the governor and the governor basically will come and say, Oh, we have arrived and like, and that is why House of Rep is also kicking against it. Mm -hmm. And that is why the civil society is kicking against it because of the abuse. Ordinarily, unanimity is should be a very nice thing to say, Oh, we have all agreed. Consensus means unanimity. Mm -hmm. Everybody has agreed that this person should represent, mm -hmm. which will reduce squabbles, which yeah. will also promote togetherness mm -hmm. in as in supporting a particular person. Mm -hmm. But how do you arrive at the unanimity of the entire stakeholders, or rather, the, the stakeholders of a party are supposed to be the people that ought to participate in the indirect primaries. Mm -hmm. the, each party has a constitution that has provided for who and who. Some parties provided that yes, all the elected persons, if it's for the if it's for the gubernatorial seat, all the elected persons, whether House of Assembly, whether National Assembly, they are all supposed to be the people that will conduct the primaries. States, executives, local governments, ward chairmen, and so. Consensus should not mean the Senate ought to have gone further to say mm. this consensus can only be reached by these people. You know, prior, it means the same thing within direct primary. Prior the to higher. the resumption of the National Assembly, the issue we had was direct primary. Now we have a totally new one. It is consensus. I, I, mm. I, I had a member of the House of Reps say, uh, say that their own House rule did not allow them to add a new provision to whatever is sent you back. Know, based on what Mr. President sent, that it was clearly written in Mr. President's um, um, letter uh, that they should open it up for both direct and indirect. I think the only time we heard Mr. President talk about consensus was during a televised interview, yeah. way after that letter was written. But according to him, he's not sure whether the Senate House rule you know, accommodate such provision. Yeah. But we expect in the next few days to have a harmonization committee yeah. that will sit and look at all these um, different divergent positions. How, are you optimistic that, um, or let me just ask you, what do you think would happen? Yeah, the, the tone is out there already. The, as usual, I must say, the lower house is talking tough. Yeah. We are not aware of this consensus thing. And our, the, 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 the sort of uh, bogs the discussion in by saying they are being guided by their house rules. You know, when it comes to the lawmaking chambers, maybe they 
tag something that has to do with house rule. Mm. It's a marathon. I mean, it's a long journey. They are telling you this is our rules cannot allow us, and the two chambers must agree. Mm. The two bills must be harmonized That's right. for it to proceed. So the lower chamber, as usual, is already talking tough. The Senate, as usual, always amenable. Uh, the Senate chamber is made up of uh, elderly, more elderly people, so to speak, more comfortable people. Uh, Ex-governors here, former ministers there, and what have you. So they are I see are younger and more. Yeah, they are younger, <laughs> respectively more vibrant. Mm. And then some people tell you more heady. Hmm. So I I don't see a situation where they will just run through this. I must tell you. The consensus issue within the lawmakers will be an issue. Hmm. Outside the chambers, the civil society is already interpreting and introducing various uh, meanings to it. I got educated when the barrister was talking. The truth about this consensus thing is for me another uh, angle by the same gladiators to further box themselves in yeah. and you'll be sure you'll be surprised that why our senators are green yeah. negotiations political horse tradings the victims of consensus likely if it goes because all these things we are talking about it's not it is not the laws that are the issues it's actually how we practice them that's right if we will do them the way they even if they give you direct primaries and uh, the, as usual the governors send their men uh, uh, to, to go and uh, our politicians not to mention governors send their men to go and snatch boxes here and there and then they return who they still want you will just be in court again <laughs> the candidate will be conducting election <laughs> so what i'm saying is the consensus issue should be managed in such a way that it will not delay the signing of the bill mm. because it, it there is need for a lot of explanation as regards who will form the consensus body or committee it, it, we've seen instances where the party decide even through direct primary or indirect primary that these are candidate and somebody is in court and the court says no because of the procedure this other person Senator uh, Jaribe in uh, Cost River is a good example. Yeah. That was a primary, indirect primary or direct primary, conducted by PDP, yeah. won by someone else, supported by the governor, party leaders, what have you. And the national leadership of the PDP came out and issued a statement this is our candidate. But Jaribe went to court and the other fellow was sworn in as a senator. He was already there for a while. The court said no. By virtue of your own rules, the court quoted PDP's own rules, own uh, uh, constitution. That is, if uh, 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 the process is flawed, this other group did their own fairly better. This are this is the group that was not monitored by the party, and when one of the conditions is that the party must monitor it. But somehow, their own was deemed to be better organized. And today, is the senator representing that. So, the issue of uh, consensus is such that you cannot pin it to one angle like that. Don't also forget the fact that with all this electoral law, uh, party constitution, there is still the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And the, the, the learned ones told us that when there is argument, when there is in the decision to be made, the Federal Republic of Nigeria Constitution is supreme. Isn't it, sir? If it That's is correct. so, there is a clause there that says, my freedom to uh, defend my rights cannot be taken away from me. So, meaning that even if all of you in the party says, you have agreed by consensus to take Nifemi, I can still go to court. Mm. So, Absolutely. where is consensus? So, laws, will you lead us? laws alone are not enough. We are told that it's also important that we pay attention to its suppression. Um, do you foresee any ambiguity if, uh, you know, the harmonized document go the way of the senators? Yeah, I think um, 
you know, why some people, civil society group, are insisting we have either direct or indirect primaries is that the party constitution already provide various party constitutions already provided who are going to participate in these indirect primaries. Okay. W simply means that if somebody comes to say Mr. A is the flag bearer for this, you now go into how did they, how was the election conducted, who voted what. Mm -hmm. Now, but in the consensus arrangements that we have now, it simply means that there, it's vague. You know, how will you determine who made this consensus? Now, what I think is, if they in the process of their harmonization, if Senate is not ready to drop the consensus arrangement, let it be defined. Mm -hmm. Let them include a clause which mm -hmm. says that this consensus for this purpose can only be made by all the people that are entitled to vote in the primaries mm -hmm. under an indirect rule. Once they put it, it simply means the same indirect election or indirect nomination of a candidate. So if it's indirect primaries again, you have achieved the same thing. That one even becomes more difficult for them because it means that the court can ask you, if you say you've arrived at a consensus, where is the signatures of those that arrived at the consensus? Because that, that will mean the, that will become issue because it's issue of voting. This person voted, this is how it was counted. So consensus is even a bit more and be more difficult, you know. So these are the two things. Either the House will insist if we must go on consensus let us define it yeah. but if they are ready but I think they should simply go on something that is very clear direct primaries or indirect so that the court will be able to find out how did you arrive at this person you have chosen yeah. so that my own rights under the Constitution will not be breached because consensus can breach my right when majority of people want me to hold the flag or to force them to use the flag of the party and two or three persons says no you cannot use it so you see my rights to represent people in the party will not be and the rights of all those people will also become in jeopardy yeah. so so let's hope that they will do the right thing and we move on and that is why we are talking about let them uh, get the bill signed into law now when it becomes an act if party A decides to go, if party A may be a governor, like we have the governors that are pocketing the parties, if you present somebody that is not acceptable to the, to the electorates, let the electorates choose and throw away that person. By the time we get the act ready, by the time we get the INEC to work, the, to do the right things, and the, the voters to ensure they come out to vote, nobody will be looking for his wife or for his son or for his in-law to become the governor and succeed him. This issue of successions, every party wants to win at the election. They don't want, but when they know that INEC is not working very well, and that will later, you know, we've been talking about who, which list is being sent to the, to the National Assembly. So these are very important things we need to do, and we get there. Well, we have issues with the phone line, so let's give you an alternative line in case you want to be a part of this conversation. It's 90 241 that's 90 If you call in from outside Nigeria, remember to add plus 234. Um, it's important now that we're talking about, you know, um, 2023 elections. Mm -hmm. uh, the concern of many people would be, uh, since we don't have the alternative for independent candidacy, Correct. how do we get things right within the parties such that they run a system that fits the best candidate possible? so that Nigerians can have quality choices to make. I've had conversations on this table, and people have said that, well, the issue of party supremacy is key. But then when you say party su supremacy, you also understand what it means. It means that they say the state governor is automatically the, the leader, leader of, the party. of the party. Is that going to change anytime soon? <laughs> yeah, see, if what we want to consider ourselves with is the emergence of the best candidates as our leaders, mm. We should stop bothering ourselves about party supremacy. We should stop worrying ourselves about thinking with the activities of the party. It won't give us that result. What will give us the result is what we are not looking at. It is to empower the Electoral Commission to be able to conduct credible elections. Good. It is to empower the people, the voters, to be able to take informed decisions once they are holding their voters card. Mm -hmm. You see, when you are sure as a party leader, and he is sure as a party leader, that if you present a weak candidate, you will be defeated. That the people will reject it. Nobody will teach you to do party supremacy. Mm -hmm. Nobody will teach you to do uh, proper nomination processes. So, 
I believe that once we have an electoral process that throws up the actual desire of the people, mm. the parties will sit tight, correct the anomalies within themselves, and produce candidates that can win the election. Like he said, every party wants to, the basic interest of any political party is to win the election and grab power. Yes, it's to grab power. It's not, they're not interested in any other drama of politicking or democracy. Oh. Power. And since power is not served like that, that is why they go extra mile. And since they know that the people also still do not have the decision making power, not in our election in Nigeria. I must say sincerely that things are really, really improving as a very, at a very uh, fast pace. The last election in uh, Anambra is a good example of where we can be in a very uh, short time. Where the people can say, look, whatever you are saying, we they wait for now. Now election day we go decide. <laughs> look at the drama. Some of us were in Anabra to see things for ourselves. Various type of analysis writing, it could go this way, it could go this way. Then you go next week again, the mood in town will tell you, oh, something has changed. Mm. And then the people were watching all of us. Now that day, now we we'll go decide. And on that day, they spoke resoundingly. Yes. And it was only made possible because the electoral system was a bit uh, uh, fair, credible, and willing. Because the willingness is key. Once the system is willing to do the right thing, other things will somehow fall into place. Look at the security apparatus in Anambra. That's in an election that even some forces didn't want to hold. But the same security that could not secure local government election in some places secured the state. Unfortunately, less than 10% of them. Um, because the Anambra. people were already threatened. Mm. Be, there, there were three categories of incidents. The threat. Then there was that ordinary apathy. That look, even if we vote safe, not be waiting, they won't do it, they go do. Mm. Then there was the issue of litigations. And our elections suffered so much litigation that as a reporter on the street, you ask who is the candidate of a very popular candidate, they know the they say no be so so person, I mean they don't change them again. <laughs> so within a week they have changed candidates of the party three, four times. So even when they are mentioning on election day, people are still asking, come, oh boy, now so, so person is still be candidate of so party, I mean they don't change that. Huh? So that led to a lot of indecision. So those three factors actually affected the turnout of voters. I get but point. for those who came out, they were determined to speak. And they did. And that's what would enhance and change our party politics in Nigeria. When all the parties know that the people has the final say and they can actually reject a bad candidate, then everybody will present a good candidate. There must be other things to look out for in the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. Um, you, you know, we've heard the lawmaker say, don't let us throw the baby away with the... So when we return, we look at the other things in, in the birth water, apart from the baby. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean uh, look at other things that Nigerians indeed have to look forward to as we count down to the big one. We'll take a short break, and when we return, we'll also open the phone lines for your contribution. Stay with us. We are back and we're looking at developments politically ahead the general election in 2023. The number to call in is 090-241-63440. 090-241-63440. Um, you can add plus 234 if you're calling from outside the country. Remember the call rates apply. Chikuma Izela, lawyer, public affairs analyst, Dari Odufa Wokon, assistant editor of the nation's new paper, uh, newspaper are uh, my guest this morning gentlemen thank you so much for staying the course yeah. on the program thank all right you. so we were talking about the other things to look out for um electronic transmission of results is perhaps um you know the big meat in the meal and, and everyone is talking about how effective it was during the anambra election even though there are still there were still skirmishes you know you know the usual logistic errors uh, you, um uh, during that election but how optimistic are you about this particular document if it gets the president's asset this time oh certainly i think it's going to be a step in the right direction i mean you can't you can't get everything right at the same time so once we have that electronic transmission legalized it's easier for INEC to say this is what they are. We may have some problems in some remote areas where it may not happen, but that may not be more than 30 percent 
we can use 70 percent and move and then use the paper backup in the remaining 30 percent of the country and continue mm -hmm. remember that electronic transmission would not or was not intended to invalidate the paper transmission mm -hmm. so both are together in fact the paper transmission under the act or under the proposed bill is even more authentic assuming there is a conflict between the two but the only thing is that it would have deprived the politicians the opportunity of turning the collation center into a bazaar mm -hmm. we have been, some of us have been shouting that in the past the problem is not the normal the small uh, rigging you go and bring on the age to vote the problem is what you call wholesale rigging at the collation center mm -hmm. where a party will get 30 persons and it will make three hundred thousand mm -hmm. put two zeros that is the problem so that's now inflates in a particular place where you have less than three hundred persons and you have three million that is the problem so electronic transmission will make it impossible because as it was happening at the pulling pulling boot once the result is being declared by the polling uh, 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 electoral officer at the polling booth, electoral officer at the polling booth is sent directly to the national. So by the time you get to the local government and you're now announcing one million votes from that local government, the national office has maybe 70% of the votes, which may be less than 100,000. Meanwhile, you have 3 million, your, your transmitter will tell you how. And the, the new bill, the proposed bill, will empower them to nullify that which you have and announced so mm. it's going to be what we hold for a minute to take mazi korafo's call from mm. arutruku in abia state good morning mazi this bill we are talking about the proposed bill to this national assembly whether it is direct or indirect but the cross that is creating problem is this issue of who we see now we have come to this issue of consensus, which is not is not healthy. Why do I say consensus candidate is not healthy? One, it now creates room for godfatherism. In Nigeria today, for you to get employment, for get or to get promoted in any organization, especially federal and state, you must have godfather in Abraham, godfather in Isaac, godfather in Jacob. <laughs> if you don't have those three, you'll be hanged. If you don't have all those three, all those three groups, they means they're hanging, which creates room for that issue of godfatherism, which is not healthy. Now, the government or the National Assembly now bringing that clause into the constitution about a little sense is creating more problems for Nigeria. They means to say everything we are going to do now for the godfatherism, which is not healthy. And this issue of politics, why can't Nigeria leave this issue of either direct or indirect, anyone you wish. And if that issue of that talk to us, because it's not healthy. Now, as a that means automatically Nigeria, the giant of poverty in the whole world. Nigeria, the giant of illiteracy in, uh, in the whole world. It is not nothing. We are talking about the you know, we are bringing back all those archaic principles, which is not healthy. Now, we have to on all these things. We have seen what is happening now in UK, between the uh, Boris and the the parliament and the whole country because of the party which organized this last year may and is suppressing today now why is this suppressing we have to learn a lesson because they said he lied and he, 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 before before he agreed now he's turning to the British and which is that means they are now insisting that he must go if such policy in nigeria we have all the better it will help us so that we streamline things we are doing in nigeria politics to have a better face and have a woman face but the question of I am in the office. Governor decides the what will be the senator in the state. Governor decides who will be half of it. Governor decides who will be a, 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 a member of that. These are the problem of all this issue of top cross, which is not healthy. So I'm just going on Nigeria. Be honest speaking, that today is a Supreme when it has to send. Let us pray with them. Supreme when it has to help Nigeria so that we do the needful. Thank you very much. Have a pleasant day in Lagos. Thank you, Mazi, for your contribution. So, Anek is waiting on the National Assembly to be able to come out with a detailed timetable. Yeah. How longer do we have? You know, because they say what makes an election credible is not just what happens on election day it's yeah, the processes long before it um is that a sense of course we saw what the national assembly did within two days but with these consensus in the mix uh, i i hope it was not going to take a longer time yeah, uh, we can only beg that it shouldn't take a long time because already we saw the release by enic 
making the categorical statement that they they would prefer that this baby be signed in good time. Mm. Otherwise, they cannot even issue an authentic timetable for the 2023 election. Those, those were their words. And they need to know what's going to happen. It's not as if there are no laws with which they can work. They are only saying they would not like a situation where they are starting preparing based on the existing uh, provisions. So now you now come in and say we have just passed this new one two or three months to election. Mm -hmm. It's going to, I mean, throw all their preparation into uh, confusion. So we can only appeal to all gladiators as it were now. Executive, legislator, higher and lower chambers, please Resolve all these issues. The consensus issue, I, it, as, as much as I see it as an issue, I also see it as something that can be easily resolved. That is how far the way out. Young this thing off or make it more explicit. Mm. What do you mean by consensus? Because when we put hanging statements or words into what we want to call laws, we create more problems. Consensus. Who will be the stakeholders? Who are those qualified to be described as that body of consensus. Mm. Oh, once we have the opinion of so, 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 and so, it is acceptable. But you know the process? It simply means each party will have to go back and decide who those people will have to be. Mm. We can make it more easy for all of us by saying, okay, I, I see little or no difference between consensus and indirect as it were. Why don't we just say direct and indirect? Simple. Pick it out of the two. Political parties, you can do either of this. And if there is a political party, I still insist that there is a law also that empowers INEC to conduct election the way it deems fit. That law has not been repealed. In spite of all this, okay. if INEC, in the process of conducting an election, sees a difficulty and feels that we have to bend the rule here, it is so empowered to be interpreted by the judiciary. Mm -hmm. Because INEC will not say because all the political parties were unable to use direct primary, therefore there will be an election in 2023. No. The, the commission will find a way of conducting the election that will still be acceptable to the law and to the people. So what should be important now is let's have the Electoral Act passed. It is a document and I believe that all arguments, especially legal documents, can be improved on as time goes on. Yeah. So if we are yet to get to where we want with the Electoral Act, let's do what we can do now. Let's take all we can now. Let's leave what we cannot take for now. We'll come back to it. It's, it's a work in progress. We can't finish making our laws in one day. There are still a lot of issues as regards our election that we still need to take second and third looks at and try to make better. So I will appeal to all the legislators, upper and lower chamber. Yeah. I will appeal to the executive, Mr. President, make ace now because of 2023. Let's peg this somewhere. Let's do it in a way that, okay, this is a document we can still use. Knowing all of us are agreeing that yet, there is still work to be done on it. That way we will move forward. Over the years, we've seen politicians take advantage of the loopholes in the hall, I mean, in the law. Uh, I think it was in which election was this latest election? It was in Anambra, and then a court came out to say that the candidate of a party should be dropped long after the results were out. So you can imagine he, mm. he had emerged, you know, winner of that election. So we've seen situations where even pre-election matters now prevail on what transpired during uh, election itself. The APC has now announced a date for its. Um, national convention. The challenge we've also had in the past would be the, the legitimacy of the delegates that are representing party members at the national convention. Some would say um, the parties in most parts are polarized. There are different factions. There are these and that. How do you think all of these matters can be resolved long before election date so we don't continually have a situation where elections are won in court rather than during the polls. And I think that's also part of the things that the electoral at the bill seeks to uh, curb. Mm -hmm. Now, and that's why I next said it cannot give you a concrete election timetable until the because the bill also tried to give more time for the political parties to conclude 
their nominations, their direct, whether direct or indirect primaries, and people will have enough time to ventilate their grievances before the courts, and possibly the courts will now be given time. Of course, that's what is there. The courts will be given two, three months to resolve all these issues. You know, so that it's not after the elections like what happened in Anambra, and you start telling people, oh, this person is not, you know, is not qualified to to fly the flag of a particular party. So the Electoral Act will help us with that one. Then the second aspect of the second arm of your question, if I understand you very well, is what are the things that we need to do? The political parties have their their various uh, constitutions or bylaws. Now, these constitutions spell out how they should conduct particular matters. Now, the constitution is usually, you know, in order of uh, hierarchy. You have the constitution of the political parties. You have the electoral act that supersedes the constitution of the political party. Then you have the constitution that also supersedes all. And everything must be done in such a way that people's rights as enshrined in chapter 4 of the constitution must be maintained. Mm -hmm. Your right to contest, your right to be a member of the political party, your right not to be expelled without hearing you. You know, your right to, the right of each candidate not to be excluded from seeking judicial interpretation. Mm -hmm. You know, and so these are all the rights that we have. So what we need at this stage is, let this act come in, let them also specify what, because the, the National Assembly, you know, they are, the, they are actually the targets. So I believe the Senate will, in their wisdom this time around, decide to say what is the meaning of consensus. And the meaning of consensus can only mean, and it's better it's put in the act, because some judges who may not necessarily understand it may rule another thing. Uh -huh. the, the Senate should be able to include that consensus means all the members entitled to vote in an indirect primary to unanimously, you know, you know in unanimity, agree that this is the candidate and that's also okay and, and, they have and if that is the definition agree. then it's of no use it's of no importance thank I you mean, it's of no importance yes. to go out and vote <laughs> <laughs> yes let's <laughs> open the phone line is open in case you like to call in um zero nine zero uh, two four one six three four four zero is the line to call. Is the number to call zero nine zero two four one six three four four zero. Let's talk about a few other things as we begin to round up. Uh, it would appear that both the PDP and the APC are keeping their cards close to their chest as regards um, how they intend to zone out the presidency in 2023. Uh, on the front part of the punch this morning, um, the Kogi State Governor is saying he would declare his presidential bid after the APC convention. How soon do you think it will, how long will it take before we know we'll, which direction um, all of these parties are going to take? This is 2022, mm. the year preceding the general election. The general election. So dramas like these are not strange. I tell you, uh, the two leading parties are actually play playing cat and mouse with especially the presidential uh, tickets of their parties. This is because, like we said earlier, every political party wants to win an election. So I want to, it's a chess game, mm. it's a game of chess. I want to see what wrong step you take, then I quickly I take advantage of it that way. I want to see how smart you will be so that I can be smarter. Uh, even within APC, Belu is already showing you that he's a master chess uh, player. That it's after because he wants to know where the national chairman will come from. Already they're talking about money. North. If the national chairman is speaking from his state, hmm. he understands what that means for his own aspiration hmm. in a democracy, hmm. participatory democracy. So he understands what it means. So he's telling you, look, let me see how it goes. Then I will tell you about my ambition. Hmm. That's a pointer to more of such thing to come. PDP. I've refused to, even after picking its national chairman from a particular zone, the party has made it clear, and they keep saying it, that we have not zoned the presidential ticket. And in fact, we are hearing of a clause in the issue of the national chairmanship that it was categorically told, allegedly, we were not there, that should the presidential candidate in an open contest emerge from your zone, you will step down. Yeah. And we were told that he agreed. So that's, these are part of the dramas that will be unfolding. And for APC, we've seen various type of zoning lists and the party kept coming out to say it is fake. Yeah. So 
Okay, give us what the original one. Don't forget that all these parties have their constitution. These things are ready in their constitution. These things they are doing for these parties are actually going against their own rules. When you cannot obey your own rules, I wonder how you can rule others. Yeah. We will zone. If this is from here, this will not be from there. It is enshrined in their various constitutions. These are things we should ordinarily take for granted. That, oh, this is how they will do it. Even if they eventually go and do it that way, they are already confusing us. Creating so much encumbrances that we are left to wonder, okay, maybe they will have rethinks. But one thing that is clear is neither of the two big parties is doing this by mistake or by an act of error. Uh. These are intentional acts meant to be part of politicking, meant to checkmate the, the opponents, meant to confuse the voters, and meant to create anxiety. You see, when you go into an election, like the National Convention of APC, for example, with so much anxiety, whatever the result is, you are likely, you are most likely to just want to take it and let's move on. Don't litigate. Don't go to court. Those are the things we are hearing now. If you are a true party member and allow the party to have the final... It is when we want to turn things the way they shouldn't that we begin to hear such things. But I know for sure that Nigeria is evolving democratically. And sooner than we all think, the voter will surely be king in Nigeria. Sooner than we all think. The, the sentiment for the presidency to come from the south was strong last year, uh, particularly among southern governors. And um, we see how that eventually play out. But we had a conversation yesterday about um, the statement um, made by the um, Speaker of the House of Reps about the qualification for presidency and governorship seats. It's of the opinion that uh, we should have upgraded a long time ago from just an SSC certificate. What are your thoughts about that? I think it's long overdue. Because uh, for, for various manipulations, ordinarily the voters should be able to say, oh, we must choose somebody who is a graduate as a minimum qualification to the office of the president. Because if you understand what the presidency does or what the president himself would have to supervise, you'll understand that it has to be somebody that has some you know, information around, can process information, can understand what the international politics is. This is not a banana republic. This is the world's greatest black nation so you can't be thinking of having somebody who has below first degree to rule nigeria that's why we are we are still stuttering around we are not moving forward so if the i i commend the speaker for saying so but it's a constitutional issue it's something that will have to go through the process of yeah, constitutional that amendment, and that will take so it's not something for this election anyway Absolutely. but then that does not mean they cannot start they can kick start it and uh, we will we, we, we'll get there but what is important at this time is one we want the political parties to be a bit more serious. Sensitize the voters. Let the voters understand that, look, we need somebody who can take us to, a not to the next level, because we're not in any level now. You know, somebody who will now take us from where we are, down there. Mm. How can you be talking about being the largest black nation with the most intelligent people? If you go to United States or in Europe, you see what Nigerians are doing in their various governments and in their various civil service. But when you come to Nigeria, you see that common Rwanda that came out from civil war is even far better than Nigeria. A giant sleeping. So we need not just somebody who has a first degree or more degrees, but we need somebody who understands what to do. We have governors that are graduates. We have many of them that are graduates. But how many of them are doing well? And that is why we're emphasizing on giving power to the people to uh, look at Anambra State, like my colleague said. Anambra State had to, not because Soludo was a former CBN, but because he performed as a CBN governor. And he's been there trying to point the way out. Mm. So we need the electorates. The electorates know people they can vote for. But we have to empower them. We have to get them sensitized. We have to get the political parties sensitized. Them. We have to get the civil society group to... Once the, the civil society group did very well in 2003 and 2007. But because INEC was not ready to accept the votes being cast by people, by the voters, 
civil society groups started sleeping because voters can no longer be spoken to. When you speak to voters, they will say, our votes do not count and cannot count. And that is why you have the apathy you have in Anambra. Not just the security issue. It was also, why should I go and risk my life when I know that after doing that, my votes will not count? So we need two things in INEC now. We need not just the electoral. The electoral act is actually 40% of what you need in INEC. You need credible people. If you go and drop Professor Ibano and drop some of the good ones, Mike Igini and others that are doing well, that you need to bring similar, you know, souls like them. If, for instance, you go and uh, nominate, for instance, Chido Dinkalo and say, go into INEC, many enlightened people will know INEC will work. If you go and get Jibrin, for instance, uh, Professor Jibrin, and say, go into INEC, people will know that INEC may likely work better. You know, so how will you, so you, you, people, people will be ready to go and vote because they know their votes can, will be counted. The votes will be accountable. So democracy will not just be a game of number. It will mm. be a, a game of accountable number. Thank the big you. question is, will Nigeria get it right this time? Are we going to get the best of us to lead us? And it's a question that must be answered. We're counting down to the big one in 2023. It begins with who the parties field as their candidates and then whether or not people are going to come out to also exercise their franchise. Chukuma is a lawyer, public affairs analyst, Dari Udufawoto, Udufawoko, assistant editor, the nation's newspaper. Gentlemen, thank you for coming this morning. Thank you. And have a great day. We'll be back tomorrow with another one. I am Nifemi Ogunto. God bless Nigeria.